so excited to be here. This is the hundredth year. I mean, how many people can get that chance to be in Boston and kind of celebrate this event? And um, I am really very thrilled. And I have never been in Boston before, and I read so many things. And you know that we did some historical research, and so uh, Boston has been very critical, or was very critical at the beginning of the Korean movement. So. To be here is very transformative for me, so I feel like a circle is completed now. <laughs>research studies, I would say the biggest influence in terms of a long-term study was super career pattern study, mm -hmm. um, which I don't know if you studied this in your class, mm -hmm. um, it was a longitudinal study that mm -hmm. started actually studied in the late 40s uh, in Middletown, New York. At, a, uh, at that point it was a kind of um, small town, 60 miles northwest of New York now, it's actually a kind of suburban community as the city has grown, you know. Um, but it was a study that involved, um, I believe it was somewhere between 100 and 200 boys. The big problem is he didn't include girls, one of the biggest mistakes in vocational psychology history. Um, and I think that did certainly diminish the importance of the study, but he followed people over time, primarily looking at the factors that help people to develop satisfying careers. Um, it was interesting because Supra's work was very embedded in the middle class world, but his sample really included a lot of blue collar, first generation people, um, people who were poor working class families from Middletown. So in many ways, Supra's study also included a focus on poverty and social class, although it was not as overt. Mm -hmm. That was a major, major article for me.
Parsons will always be Parsons, and Parsons will always be the guy that kicked it off. But um, there were way too many people around Parsons at the time that really made things go. Um, uh, Meyer Bloomfield, uh, his, his position in our field's history needs to be way, way elevated. Uh, that first counseling staff that was uh, there with Parsons, uh, Lucinda Wyman Prince, Ralph Albertson, uh, and Philip Davis, they too deserve a tremendous amount of credit. Uh, Lucinda Wyman Prince alone, uh, if, if you know much about Boston, Simmons College has the uh, Prince School of Retail, uh, and that's, that's, her, that's her school, that's her program. Um, for the work that she did with the Women's uh, Educational Industrial Union alone, that should cement her legacy. hundred years, I think it's already happened, they'll probably continue to be more focused on finding meaning. Mm -hmm. um, right now that's kind of an upper middle class luxury. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I think the average really poor person living in, in poverty with very little education just wants a job so they can pay their rent and eat and maybe get a TV and you know have some sort of life. Mm -hmm. Finding meaning I think is pretty distant mm -hmm. for them, but I hope in the next hundred years this becomes something that's more universal and mm -hmm. that more people. And finding meaning doesn't have to mean that you're a professor or a counselor. It can mean that you know you really feel good about building a wall or a highway mm -hmm. <laughs> or a car. You know, I think it, it, um, fixing someone's plumbing. Mm -hmm. I just had a basement flood a couple days before I came here. Oh my goodness. And I think the people, they were all guys mm -hmm. who pumped out all the water mm -hmm. <laughs> and made my life possible again, Yeah, really feel good about what they do because mm -hmm. they're helping people. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I don't think it has to be high, high sure. level education kind of.